Good morning to you, good morning. It's, oh crikey, what day is it? I never know these things. It's Tuesday the 8th of January 2019. Um, I'm back in the wonderful town of Basildon. Uh, there was a few things I needed to do and they, they provided plenty of comedy. The first thing was I needed to go into my bank. Uh, I needed to transfer some money from my bank here in England to my bank in France because January tax is due. Uh, the staff in the bank have known me for all oh, longer than I care to think about but we still had to do all of the clever stuff with security and all of that and it, it, it seemed to take forever but they were very charming, very nice people and the thing that I did immediately after that was I took some English money to a bureau de change that I've been using now for years and the staff know me and I said how much I wanted to change into euros and they said oh uh, the rules have changed because there is some possibility that I am either an international terrorist or a drug dealer, the rules and regulations and the processes that you go through to change pounds sterling into euros have changed. And we had great fun with, as luck had it, showing utility bills and all of those sorts of good things that prove who I say I am. So that took quite a long time. But the next bit of business, my telephone uh, has been on the blink. And sometimes it doesn't, uh, doesn't let me talk to people, which is a bit, a bit irritating for a telephone because the whole point of a telephone is that you talk to people. So I took it back to where I got it from and they said, ah, yes, not a problem. Um, we can send it away and have it repaired under warranty, they said. And it may be up to 14 days. Uh, ah, now I've actually planned my escape back to France and it's in somewhat less than 14 days. So we've been through a, through a financial transaction and I'm fundamentally getting a new phone and the young lady who's been very polite and very charming very patient with me because as you know us older men we uh, we confuse easily don't we she said okay if you'd like to go for a walk around Basildon for five minutes or so and then all of the necessary change over from one phone to the other you know all my contacts and all that sort of thing will be done so she sent me out to walk around Basildon and I thought well I've got my camera with me and I know you lot like Basildon so here we are and if you don't visit Basildon very often this is quite a considerable change the market has been relocated round to the space in front of what used to be Marks and Spencers except it's shut And so, yeah, we've now got a new market. I'm trying to think, is this East Square? I get confused about these things. Special prices. Special for whom, one wonders. Oh, any of you want Botox and fillers? Uh, <laughs> oh dear, I, I don't think I shall bother. I'm quite happy looking the way I do.
Now, when Basildon was built quite a number of years ago, they built a church uh, dedicated to St. Martin of Tours. Interestingly, the house in France is not very far from Tours. And there it is, this sort of square sort of building that didn't have a bell tower. Now, in the 1980s, the vicar of St. Martin was a chap, very nice man, the Reverend Lionel Webber. And the Reverend Lionel Webber decided that he was going to do whatever it took to get a bell tower for the church. So there we are, we have this magnificent sort of glass bell tower. In some ways it's reminiscent of those wonderful churches in Italy where you've got a church and then a space and then the bell tower. But there we are, there's, there's this wonderful bell tower. And that wonderful brick building I used to be very familiar with at one time. Uh, that's the Magistrates Court where all of the naughtiness and malfeasance of the people of South Essex gets read out in public. You know, Fred Bloggs who pinched this or Joe Soap who clumped his missus or whatever it may be. All of the minor crime and naughtiness. Now, if you do major and significant crime, then you have to cross the road to go over there to the Crown Court, which is hiding behind the trees. We're not going to go to the Crown Court today because they can lock you up for a long time. But there we are, there's some architectural features of Basildon. Hiding behind the Magistrates Court is the police station. This is where the market used to be. Oh yes, I remember it well. Uh, I say that's where the market used to be. Depends how long ago it was that you last came to Basildon. Because the market has moved about a little bit. But yeah, I remember this is the market space. Just as I remember that sort of square brick building on the right of the image being Raquel's nightclub, or disco as it was in those days. Mm, an interesting place where people would dance and drink and drink and dance and then they would come out here at two o'clock in the morning on a Friday well, on a Saturday morning and a Sunday morning, and then, uh, well, they would discuss the meaning of life and whether or not you'd looked at someone else's girlfriend, and they would uh, do what people who'd been dancing and drinking all night do. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that's a blast from my past. I used to get paid to sit and watch people fight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there we are, changes. And when I first visited Basildon, which is in 1980, uh, that's a while ago now, that shop that is all shuttered up, that was Smith's Furniture Shops. And that really was my great uncle Percy's furniture shop. Um, I never actually met my great uncle Percy. I did go in there once or twice and I sort of say to the staff, I don't suppose old Mr. Smith's about, and they always said no, he's he was away somewhere else. But yes, that was that was a family part of the family empire as it were. But Raquel's is looking very uh, very ragged. It was always pretty ragged. Now that's an unpleasant sign of the times. Shopping trolleys loaded with bedding. Um, for a first world nation, England has got some big problems. 
homeless people sleep in shop doorways here in Basildon. Now there's all sorts of charities and organisations that make sure that they've got bedding and there's various access that they've got to sufficient to live. But yes, if you walk around Basildon at night, you'll find shop doorways with folk sleeping in them. That's a very, very sad state of affairs. Uh, I don't know the answer to it. I don't pretend to. You know, we show what compassion we can to folk who find themselves in that situation. But, you know, how on earth in a country as rich as Great Britain do we allow that to happen?